Hey guys, Pete with you here. Welcome back. How you doing? You guys doing all right? Taking care of each other? I sure hope you all said yes. Well, guess what? Today, I traveled about 75 miles from where I live south. I'm in the Washington DC area and I am at a place that used to be a fort. It's called Fort Foot. And it was built in 1863 and it was built to guard the Potomac during the Civil War. So we're gonna check this out together. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, so right here you can see this is the entrance to the trail. And here's what we know. It says, welcome to Fort Foot. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln toured Fort Foot to survey the cutting edge military technology. Would you feel safe behind 1,416 feet of earthen walls? I think I would. How about with two or 25 ton Rodman guns by your side? Oh yeah. On Fort Foot's flat hiking trails, you can follow Lincoln's footsteps and conduct your own inspection. Here's some old photos here. These are students and scouts. This is from the 1900s. And down here, this is Fort Foot under construction began in 1863 and finished in 1864. So check this out. This is exactly what the fort looked like after it was built. You can see they're numbered. So for example, number one was the hospital, which was right here. And that four right here, that was the barracks and so on. There are some things that are left over from the fort, and we're gonna go out and find them. We're off. We're heading down this trail. I've never been here before. I don't know what to expect, so we're gonna do this together. Cool that they have all these little signs on the trail telling you more about Fort Foot, which by the way was named after Admiral Andrew Foot. You can see there are people here. We're gonna check out what this says here. Looks like it was the entrance right up here. And you're gonna hear planes because we're right near Ronald Reagan Airport. Anyway, getting back to the sign. You can see it says, just ahead of you, notice how the sloped hills create an entryway. Soldiers cleared the land and piled up soil to make the earthworks. The walls were about 20 feet thick. This secure guarded entry, also known as a sally port, bustled with activity right up there and that's Secretary of State William Henry Seward he was the num the one that named Fort Foot after Admiral Andrew Foot here's another look at a drawing of what it looked like we're gonna head up this way now so you can kind of tell that there are walls here. We're gonna walk through, check out the other side. This is really cool. We'll go down there in a minute. Let's go up here, take a look. So apparently these looked, maybe there were steps. Yep, and here we go, down the steps. Oh wow, I already see something over here. Look at this. How cool is that? There are some things that are left. Yeah, this is very, very cool.
Yep, we're looking at history here, guys. Civil War history. And I just noticed over there, there's a cannon. I didn't know that there was a couple of cannons still left here that were used in the Civil War. We're gonna go take a closer look at this baby. Now I get what these were used for. Cannons were mounted on them. Of course, they're no longer here, but over here, there is a huge cannon. Oh, wow, this is incredible. I never realized how big they were. That is huge, my friends, huge. And there's another one back there too. We're going to look at that one as well. But yeah, these, uh, this is where the cannons were mounted, right here. And you can't, you can barely see it through the trees, but they face the Potomac. So any uh, sight of the enemy, oh, you have these to protect us right here. So how cool is that? That is one huge cannon. Oh my goodness, and here comes a plane. They're gonna be flying by like every couple minutes, so we're gonna be hearing some planes. Like I said, not far from Ronald Reagan Airport. That's how big a cannonball was. That is huge, huge. It's a 15 inch cannonball. And it says each ball had two ears for the shell hook to lift it. I see one right there. Wow. So it says here in 1844, young officer Thomas Jackson Rodman transformed the design of iron guns. He created a cannon barrel that cooled from the inside so the gun could shoot farther without exploding. Here's another look. It's huge. How cool is that? So as you can see, other people are out and about on this beautiful day. Checking out Fort Foot. What's left of it. There's some more people over here. We're going to go take a look at this other cannon. And I see some structure. All right. That always gets me excited. Look at this. This is incredible. I mean, look at this. That is just incredible. I wasn't expecting to see this much. What a pleasant surprise. Here's a closer look at that second cannon. There are two that are here, but there were more back in the 1800s. And again, this fort was designed to protect Washington, D.C. And as you can see, there's the Potomac over there. They had a great view of any enemy trying to get in, enemy ships. Wow, this is just uh, amazing, it really is. I hope you guys are as amazed as I am seeing this. This is so incredible. So what's also cool is you can see they could rotate the cannon to fire in whatever direction they wanted to because it rotates on this wheel track, as you can see. And I guess back here, I'm not sure what was back here, but maybe that's where they had the, the cannonballs. There's a cute little dog right there. I was talking to the owners earlier. They said he's a puppy and he's still learning. Cute. Back to the cannon. Now let's go around the front 
and take a look at that huge opening. Remember, they were 15 inch cannonballs and they shot right out of that. Can you imagine? Looks like there's a, is that a serial number perhaps? And it does say 1863 right there. It's like TJR initials. Very cool. And here's another plane. Right here, it gives you more information about how they uh, aimed. Looks like there was a sponge. Push the ball down. That is very interesting. More structure here. You can see that they used a lot of different types of stone, and that is a very thick wall right here. Look at that. Almost looks like a, a trench of some sort. Yep, this is history, guys. Incredible history. I'm going to head down this way. I see a little walking bridge here to go over. That'll get us closer to the Potomac. So apparently this area where the fort was is called Rosier's Bluff and they could have a really good view of everything including Washington DC which I'll show you from here in just a second. Here's another one of those signs from the National Park Service and this one says Fort Foot held a commanding view from Rosier's Bluff with Washington DC on the horizon and the Potomac River below. An armed sentry at the fort kept a watchful eye on the heavy traffic of ships passing by. Crew shouted as they loaded supplies onto the wharf below. The river was the main way for the Union Army to access its fort. Together, Fort Foot and Battery Rogers defended the southern approach to the Union capital from enemy ships. And there's a very, very cool. So, this is about as far as I could go. I don't know if you guys can see, but that is a huge drop. But I'm just trying to get a decent view through the trees and across the river of Washington, D.C., which is over there. So, guys, if you ever want to come here to Fort Foot, I wanted to let you know it doesn't cost anything to get in. It's free, and I can tell that they really maintain it. It's, cut, it's clean, and the signs, they show no wear at all. So, I'm very happy to, to see that. And the trails, the, they're not uh, hard for walking on. So check it out sometime. Oh, and uh, parking? I didn't have any problem parking at all. Down this trail and I spotted this. I'm not sure what this was or what it was used for. I don't see any signs around here telling me what it was. If you guys know, post it in the comments. Share with us all. Go down here and then make a left and head toward the Potomac. Maybe I can get a better view of Washington going down this way. And right here, looks like there were 
some steps. I don't know if they've been here all that time. Maybe. Looking at the, uh, the stones used, looks like the same type of formation that was used in the structure back there. And just to give you guys a perspective, I was up on that, the top of that hill right there and there was no way I was gonna go down that without falling. So we're gonna go this way. So I was just informed by those nice people with the dog, whose name, by the way, is Georgia. Cute dog. That this trail that I'm on does end down here. And they said it's a little bit better of a view, but not much. But they also said that we'll get a better view when we go to the beach side. We're gonna see it all. Here, just enjoying being out for the day. There's a view from where I am right now. And we'll get a closer look at DC when we head down the other side. Apparently there's a beach we're gonna go check out. Can't go any further. There's a wall up ahead right there. But how nice is this view? Pretty. So I just came up the hill from being down there. And I'm looking at this huge hill. And I notice that tree. It's just right at the edge of the hill right there. That is amazing. We're going up here to see what else we're going to find here at Fort Foot. What an adventure. You know me, I love adventures. All right, so that's where I came. That's the parking lot right there. When I walked in, I walked down and we went that way and through there is where those cannons were and to the right, the structures, the ruins of the fort. So now we're going to go this way. So here's another sign provided by the National Park Service. And it says, as the Civil War loomed, Union forces battened down the hatches of Washington, DC. In 1861, the Union capital city was an easy target if Confederate ships sailed up the Potomac River. In just two years, a protective ring of over 60 forts sprouted around the city. Fort Foot, perched here on Rosier's Bluff, was built with haste in eight months. Wow. The fort's claim to fame was its high-tech coastal artillery, but its cutting-edge cannons were never tested in battle. Oh, wow. That's an interesting fact. And look, here's uh, the Potomac River right there. There's Fort Foot. And according to this, we are right here right now and you can see where other structures were there's a hospital that was probably right behind me and this was a horse trough which was uh behind me as well there's barracks officers quarters this is very interesting and right there there's alexandria virginia and right behind me This is probably where the horses got their water. This is public parks. Very cool, just think. About 160 years ago or so, horses drank out of this. And it's still here. That is just amazing further walking up this trail that became 
wide open heading toward the Potomac once again to see what's up this way. So I was walking down the trail toward the Potomac to see that they had this taped off, but let's see if we can get a little peek over here without getting into harm's way. You can see there's a drop right there. A bit of a better view though, as you can see. We're gonna venture down this way now. So as I'm walking down this trail, guys, I wanted to let you know that if you have any suggestions at all for vlogs, you know what, I, what kind of stuff I like to do. Stuff like this can be anything of interest, historic, little town, whatever. Put them in the comments below, make suggestions. As long as I can get to it in a day, sorry, there's another plane. As long as I can get to it in a day, do my vlog and get back in the day, I will do it. Coming here was about 75, 80 miles from where I live. So, and I don't mind that because I love driving too. Especially when it's a beautiful day like today. Pretty cool trail here. We're heading down a little bit. And I noticed on my right, there is a road right there. And up there on the hill, there are some homes. I can imagine it probably cost a fortune to live down around here. As you can see, we are declining, getting lower and closer to the Potomac River. Wind's gonna be picking up as we get closer. Sorry, guys. Getting into these people today. There's Georgia, the dog. And I can see that they're enjoying this view right here. So I made it down. It's as close as I can get. It's noisy because of the water and the wind when I get a little closer you can see it's splashing right up close to me but look at this view my goodness and now I can see the monument it's just through Let's see if I can get to zoom in on it right there in between up through the bridge the safe second section That is the National Harbor, and I've been on that Ferris wheel. I was on it New Year's Eve, maybe uh, five years ago. It is huge, and it goes, it's really high up. I think it costs $1 a person, but you're on it for a few minutes. And I think each car holds four to six people. Yeah. Very cool, it's right at the edge there, so when you go up, you can take a look at the view from the Ferris wheel. Here's the view that we have today. Friends over there. Georgia the dog is enjoying the day, as is her family. Nice to come out and enjoy it. Very nice. Just notice straight ahead. That is a ferry right there. And over there, that's Alabama. 
Alexandria. So I decided to sit down on one of these logs and just have a little bit of water and enjoy this view. I use the word tranquility a lot. Guys, that's what this is. I love this. I really do, I love this. I look forward to seeing more things like this. We're all gonna go on along on this ride together. And I appreciate you all watching, I really do. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Wow. Is this amazing? It's just amazing. One last look before we start heading back. Beautiful. As I make my way back to my car, I just want to stress this moment, how peaceful it is out here. Just, I'm not going to talk for a few seconds, but listen. Bird stripping. Very peaceful. I love peace. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, I want to give a shout out to some of you guys for leaving some very nice comments and watching my vlogs. I'm trying to remember a few. Here comes another plane. Woohoo. But Bobo, Quinn, Chrissy, Walt, Victor, Gene. Thank you guys and thank the rest of you so much for leaving nice, positive comments. Hey, and I understand if you're, you're not gonna like everything that I do, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine as long as you keep it clean and respectable. I get it. But thank you for all you that have left really nice comments and also giving me thumbs up. Thank you so much. So I'm pretty much back to where I started from. And I noticed on this sign here, you see below, the elevation is 81 feet. And we're right here, which is the fort entrance, which is right over there. And we checked that out earlier, which was super, super cool. So I also noticed this sign that says, dumping is an insult and it's illegal. Get a tag number and report dumping. There's the number you reported to. There's also this sign that says, this is your park. Please help us keep it clean. And I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but we didn't see any graffiti anywhere, nothing. That I truly love. There's some more people going to check out. The entrance and the cannons and the structures, the ruins, Fort Foot. So I'm almost to the parking lot, getting ready to head back home. Got a pretty good drive to go, maybe uh, 90 minutes to get to where I live up in Northern Maryland. So at this time, I want to thank you all, all of you for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And th again, thanks for leaving the comments and also giving thumbs up. I appreciate that. I'm gonna be back soon. Got more fun stuff coming up. Hey, with weather like this, gonna get very busy. So thanks again for watching. I wanna stress to please take care of each other. Be nice to each other whenever you can. Share a smile. Hold a door open for somebody. Just do something nice. I mean, in this world that we live in today, we need more people to be nice. So thank you. 
Okay, so I'll see you guys on the next one. This is Pete saying, see you later. Peace out. <laughs>